Welcome to the World Brief. The content of the briefing includes Manchester City's finances play better in black than red. Pulling off a soft landing depends on the pilot. A year of ups and downs, and ups. Xi Jinping revives hopes for Panda's return to the US. Japanese toolmakers scramble to combat dual-use export risk. Manchester City's finances play better in black than red. Financial Times. Manchester City Football Club, despite consistently losing money at the operating level, has made tidy profits from trading players. Over the past decade, the club has earned nearly half a billion pounds from player sales. These profits have helped keep the club in the black, with pre-tax profits remaining positive in all but one year since 2014. However, City faces 115 charges from the English Premier League over financial fair play rules, which raises questions about the sustainability of its returns. Pulling off a soft landing depends on the pilot. Bloomberg. The global economy's ability to achieve a soft landing has become a topic of interest in recent weeks. Soft landings, in which economic growth slows but avoids a recession, are rare. However, there is optimism that central banks' efforts to control inflation will not result in a downturn. Data suggests that it is possible for inflation to decline to 2% without a recession, although this outcome is far from guaranteed. Unemployment levels are also rising, which could indicate the possibility of a recession. However, it is still too early to determine whether a hard landing is inevitable. The absence of geopolitical triggers for a downturn is encouraging, although the behavior of oil prices is a cause for concern. Ultimately, the success of achieving a soft landing depends on the actions of central banks, particularly the Federal Reserve. A year of ups and downs, and ups. Financial Times. Stuart Kirk, former portfolio manager and author of the Skin in the Game column, reflects on the performance of his portfolio over the past year. While his portfolio has achieved a respectable return of 6.2% over the past 12 months, Kirk is disappointed that he could have achieved almost the same return by putting his money in a deposit account. He is also frustrated that the MSCI World Index outperformed his portfolio, and that US equities have performed well since he sold his holdings in September. However, Kirk remains bearish on US equities due to their expensive valuation and the expected slowdown in US growth next year. He plans to purchase an oil and gas ETF and explore the world of short ETFs. Kirk also reflects on lessons learned, including the importance of fully understanding investment products and considering the benefits of a self-managed pension. Despite his criticisms, Kirk acknowledges that he has still achieved a significant gain in his portfolio. Xi Jinping revives hopes for Panda's return to the US. Wall Street Journal. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has suggested that China will send new pandas to the US, in what may be a minor gesture in an otherwise bitter rivalry, but symbolic of attempts by both governments to find areas to cooperate. Pandas have long occupied a special place in US-China diplomacy, with the steady repatriation to China of pandas from US zoos in recent years appearing as clear a marker of faltering bilateral relations as the black and white fur on the animals' backs. The last remaining pandas in the U.S. reside in Atlanta Zoo but are scheduled to be sent to China next year. Three others departed just last week from Washington's National Zoo, which has hosted pandas almost continuously since 1972. At a meeting, she said China is ready to continue cooperation with the U.S. on panda conservation and specifically named the zoos in Washington and San Diego. This is seen as a token of potential cooperation, with warm and fuzzy remarks by China's leader about pandas as envoys of friendship between the Chinese and American peoples reviving expectations that Beijing would dispatch new sets of the popular bamboo-munching animals to the U.S. Japanese toolmakers scramble to combat dual-use export risk. Nikkei Asia. Japanese machine tool suppliers such as Fanuc and DMG Mori are taking steps to prevent their advanced technology from being used for military purposes. This follows an investigation by Nikkei which found that China's main research institution for developing nuclear weapons had used a state-of-the-art machine tool manufactured by a German subsidiary of DMG Mori. DMG Mori has installed sensors in its products to detect improper relocations and can remotely shut down devices if necessary. However, the German subsidiary did not implement this tracking system until 2021. What's left when a long war suddenly ends? New York Times. Azerbaijan's President Aliyev celebrated his troops' capture of Nagorno-Karabakh with a victory parade in Stepanakert, a city that was populated by ethnic Armenians until they fled in fear. Azerbaijani forces captured the city in September, extending their gains made in 2020 when they took over most of the territory that Armenia had seized in the 1990s. 
More than 100,000 of Nagorno-Karabakh's residents have fled since September, and Azerbaijanis have been moving in to assume control over homes and communities that their families were expelled from decades ago. Although the guns have fallen silent, the triumphalism of the Azerbaijanis and provocative statements made by Aliyev, who has irredentist claims against Armenia, are unlikely to calm long-running ethnic tensions. The conflict over Nagorno-Karabakh, a strategic region in the Caucasus, has caused the deaths of tens of thousands of soldiers and civilians over the years. Many fear that the wounds of the conflict will fester, leading to further violence in the future. Xi's warm words jar with reality for foreign companies in China. Bloomberg. Chinese President Xi Jinping has promised to take more heartwarming measures to attract foreign businesses to the country, despite the fact that many companies have been facing increasing difficulties in China. The Chinese government has struggled to regain its footing in the wake of the pandemic, and the country's business climate has notably deteriorated in recent years. Strict COVID restrictions, investigations into foreign companies, and increased compliance risks due to sanctions from the US and Europe have all contributed to a decline in foreign direct investment. In addition, a recent survey by the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai found that respondents were the gloomiest they'd been about the business outlook in decades. Many foreign firms are grappling with a range of challenges, including unpredictable regulation, concerns over employee safety, and curbs on transferring data overseas. As a result, some of the world's largest companies have transferred out key employees and hived off local operations. The challenges have also led some U.S. brands to look to move manufacturing out of China. Who wants to catch Jack Ma's falling knife? Bloomberg. Alibaba has suspended plans to spin off its cloud operations and paused the listing of its supermarket unit causing its stock to drop and wiping $20 billion off the company's market value. Founder Jack Ma's family trust also plans to sell 10 million shares within the next week. The company is undergoing a major business revamp and has been replacing much of its C-suite, while also needing to spend billions of dollars on new fields such as generative AI. Investors are concerned about who will be held accountable for the company's future spending. Tim Hortons enters Singapore's crowded coffee shop scene. Bloomberg. Tim Hortons has opened its first outlet in Singapore, with plans to open three more in the coming months. The move is part of the coffee chain's expansion into Southeast Asia, with plans to open in Malaysia and Indonesia in the next year. Tim Hortons is tapping into the rising affluence of Asian consumers and the booming tea and coffee supply chains in the region. The chain has also been expanding in China, where it currently has 700 stores and plans to have 2,750 by 2026. Tim Hortons is owned by Restaurant Brands International, which also owns Burger King and Popeyes, and Biden and Mexico's leader will meet in California. Fentanyl, migrants and Cuba are on the agenda. Associated Press. President Joe Biden and Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador will discuss migration, fentanyl trafficking, and Cuba relations during their meeting in San Francisco. The two leaders have a tense relationship, with differences over issues such as fentanyl production and the killing of journalists. López Obrador is expected to raise the issue of Cuba and urge Biden to resume a dialogue with the country and end U.S. sanctions. Biden, on the other hand, is expected to bring up migration as the U.S. continues to manage a growing number of southern border crossings. DeSantis, Haley and Ramaswamy will meet in Iowa for a family discussion on politics. Associated Press. Three Republican presidential candidates, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Vivek Ramaswamy, will participate in a family discussion roundtable in Des Moines, Iowa, on Friday. The event is being organized by the influential Christian organization The Family Leader and aims to give Iowans a chance to see the candidates' worldviews. Former President Donald Trump, who is the frontrunner for the 2024 Republican nomination, was invited but is not expected to attend. The event is not a debate, and the Republican National Committee warned that attending it would disqualify candidates from future debates. Businessman was big noter but never acted for Chinese government, foreign interference trial hears. ABC. A Melbourne man, Sunny Duong, is on trial for allegedly trying to influence Australian politicians on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. Prosecutors claim that Duong made a donation to the Royal Melbourne Hospital in an attempt to build a relationship with former Federal Minister Alan Tudge, whom he saw as a potential Prime Minister. However, Duong's lawyer argues that the donation was a genuine attempt to help frontline healthcare workers during the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. The lawyer also denies that Duong had any knowledge of being in contact with Chinese intelligence operatives. Former Victorian MP Robert Clark testified that he received an email from Duong with proposals to improve the Australia-China relationship, but he considered the ideas to be naive and superficial. The trial is ongoing.
APEC latest, OpenAI CEO warns of unknown risks in elections. Yahoo! U.S. President Joe Biden met with the leaders of Japan and South Korea. The gathering, on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, gave Biden a chance to brief Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol on his hours of discussion with China's President Xi Jinping. The meeting was the first gathering of the trio since they gathered at Camp David in August, where the countries agreed to deepen military cooperation and coordinate a response to Chinese aggression in the South China Sea. Japan's Kishida and South Korea's Yoon talked over issues of concern, including North Korea's continued nuclear and missile activities. Analysis What China Xi Gained from His Biden Meeting Yahoo! President Xi Jinping's first trip to the U.S. in six years was a success, with the U.S. achieving aims from China rather than the other way around. Xi Jinping was able to win U.S. policy concessions in exchange for promises of cooperation, enabling him to ease bilateral tensions and focus on economic growth. Russia loads missile with nuclear-capable glide vehicle into launch silo. Al Jazeera. Russia has loaded an intercontinental ballistic missile with the Avangard hypersonic glide vehicle, a nuclear-capable weapon, into a launch silo. President Vladimir Putin unveiled the Avangard in 2018 as a response to the U.S.'s development of a new generation of weapons. The Avangard can detach from the rocket and maneuver sharply at hypersonic speeds. Russia and the U.S. have both expressed concerns about the deterioration of arms control treaties, while also developing new weapons systems, including hypersonic ones. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Six here, your resident observer from the Six Degrees world. It's time for our daily roundup of news from around the globe. So, let's dive right in. First up, we have some interesting news from the world of football. Manchester City Football Club has been making tidy profits from trading players, which has helped keep the club in the black. However, they are facing charges over financial fair play rules, which raises questions about the sustainability of their returns. Looks like City's finances play better in black than red. Moving on to the global economy, achieving a soft landing has become a hot topic. Central banks' efforts to control inflation may prevent a recession, but it's still too early to determine if a hard landing is inevitable. Unemployment levels are rising, which could indicate the possibility of a recession. The success of achieving a soft landing depends on the actions of central banks, particularly the Federal Reserve. Let's hope they stick the landing. In the world of investments, portfolio manager Stuart Kirk reflects on the performance of his portfolio over the past year. While he achieved a respectable return, he is disappointed that he could have achieved the same return by putting his money in a deposit account. Kirk remains bearish on U.S. equities due to their expensive valuation and the expected slowdown in U.S. growth next year. Looks like Kirk is ready to explore some new investment strategies. Now, let's talk pandas. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has suggested that China will send new pandas to the U.S., symbolizing attempts by both governments to find areas of cooperation. Pandas have long occupied a special place in U.S.-China diplomacy. Looks like these furry creatures are doing more than just munching on bamboo, they're acting as envoys of friendship between the Chinese and American peoples. Who knew pandas had such diplomatic power? Japanese toolmakers are scrambling to combat dual-use export risk. After an investigation found that China's main research institution for developing nuclear weapons had used advanced technology from a German subsidiary, Japanese machine tool suppliers are taking steps to prevent their technology from being used for military purposes. Looks like they're tightening the screws on their exports. In Azerbaijan, the capture of Nagorno-Karabakh has led to celebrations but also fears of renewed ethnic tensions. The conflict has caused the deaths of tens of thousands of soldiers and civilians over the years, and many fear that the wounds of the conflict will fester, leading to further violence in the future. Let's hope for a peaceful resolution to these long-running tensions. In China, President Xi Jinping promises to take more heartwarming measures to attract foreign businesses to the country, despite the fact that many companies have been facing increasing difficulties. The business climate in China has notably deteriorated in recent years, with strict COVID restrictions, investigations into foreign companies, and increased compliance risks. Looks like Xi Jinping is trying to warm things up, but will foreign businesses feel the heat? Alibaba has suspended plans to spin off its cloud operations and paused the listing of its supermarket unit, causing its stock to drop. Investors are concerned about who will be held accountable for the company's future spending. Looks like Alibaba is experiencing a bumpy ride, but let's hope they can navigate through it. Tim Hortons is expanding its presence in Southeast Asia, opening its first outlet in Singapore. The coffee chain is tapping into the rising affluence of Asian consumers and the booming tea and coffee supply chains in the region. 
looks like Tim Hortons is brewing up some expansion plans. President Joe Biden and Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador are set to discuss migration, fentanyl trafficking, and Cuba relations during their meeting. The two leaders have a tense relationship, but this meeting provides an opportunity for dialogue. Let's hope they can find common ground. And finally, three Republican presidential candidates will participate in a family discussion roundtable in Iowa. The event aims to give Iowans a chance to see the candidates' worldviews. Looks like the race for the 2024 Republican nomination is heating up, but will any of these candidates emerge as the frontrunner? That's all for today's news roundup, folks. Remember, the world is a fascinating place, full of ups and downs, twists and turns. Stay curious, stay informed, and keep those questions coming. What are your thoughts on today's news? Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.